Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism of Raw Sandbox in Gerbil Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I want to talk about the Vulcan rocket and specifically the three core heavy configuration that people seem to be obsessed with. Now there is a Vulcan heavy in sort of the pamphlets that ULA has on the Vulcan rocket on their website. It's basically just a single core with six of these smaller boosters, these SRBs uh, arrayed on it and then uh, perhaps an expanded centaur stage, but details were not particularly given. Uh, so yeah, there's that idea, but people pestered Tori Bruno, the CEO of ULA, about this sort of three stick configuration for a heavy because Delta four heavy was three cores like this. And so they wondered whether Vulcan would have their, you know, ULA's future rocket would also have three cores like this in a heavy configuration. And uh, CEO Bruno decided to uh, show off a model of this configuration, hopefully jokingly. I say hopefully because I don't think it's a particularly good idea. Um, people missed a few things with the numbers in contemplating this configuration that I will now explain. So Delta IV Heavy, I, I wasn't particularly enthusiastic about in the first place. I find it very inefficient, but one of the major features of Delta IV that's missing in Vulcan is the fact that the cores are hydrolox, hydrogen and oxygen, which means they burn more efficiently than the methylox cores that we have on Vulcan. Now, at the same time, Vulcan is providing the bulk of the Delta V to get to orbit, the bulk of the energy to get to orbit with its methylox cores. So they're very heavy compared to the rest of the rocket. Uh, the upper stage and the payload are not comparatively as heavy. So when you add cores to it, you don't get that much extra thrust to weight ratio. And Vulcan, as far as I know, uh, when you have just a single, single stick like we have here, uh, it needs to be underfueled in order to actually get off the ground. Now that's not unusual. I mean, uh, Delta II wouldn't have been able to get off the ground without boosters either. This is actually better than Delta II. So, you know, the idea of rockets that have trouble getting off the ground without boosters is not weird. It happens. So if we underfuel about halfway there and uh, then we have a thrust weight ratio that can get off the ground, of course, without the extra fuel, we wouldn't have a 32 ton payload. Speaking of the payload, the for the configuration that has the six boosters, let's slap six boosters on here. Okay, that's a lot of thrust to weight ratio you'll notice, but we've underfueled a bit, so let's pop that fuel back in. Okay, so the payload capacity on, on the website for this configuration is 27.2 tons. And if we resize this down to 27.2, uh, that's about 27.2. Uh, we see that thanks to the high thrust weight ratio, as long as we can do that part of the burn efficiently, we might be able to get this to low Earth orbit. Honestly, the rocket is meant for high orbits, not really for low Earth orbit, and we'll talk more about that in a sec. And sorry for the textures, uh, this one being not quite in the right position, but couldn't qu quite get the flame. I'd have to make a new part, like for the right booster if I wanted to get the flame oriented properly. Uh, but now we've got a 1.1 thrust to weight ratio instead of the 1.5 thrust to weight ratio, which means that we need more total delta V in order to get to orbit. Uh, so we can't do it with the 9,500 normally, we need more than that. But as far as I can tell, the, be uh, the most I'm willing to put in here is about 32 tons. I mean, we could say it's a little bit more than that. So you've got these extra large cores with expensive engines at the bottom and you're not getting that much more to orbit is the problem and you've also got this thrust weight ratio issue now uh, what if instead of aiming for low earth orbit with that we aim for a payload going to high orbit instead because this looks very painful so let's say going to the moon well one thing you can see is resizing the payload sure doesn't help our thrust to weight ratio at the start very much because again most of the mass is in the cores so even if you took out all the fuel from this stage 
Now, th- now this stage has no fuel, and we only have a 12-ton payload at the top. The surface thrust weight ratio is still 1.16. Because again, because these are methylox stages instead of hydrolox stages, they're very, very heavy. Now, uh, with Falcon Heavy from SpaceX, they have kerosene and oxygen, which is also not very offens- uh, 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 efficient fuel. Not offensive either. But uh, uh, it's not as efficient as hydrolox. But the upper stage is also kerosene and oxygen, so it's a very heavy stage. And instead of having the core do most of the work to get to orbit, the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, the upper stage does a lot of the work. And that allows the cores to return back for a landing. So the cores actually only do, well, in a Falcon 9, maybe 3,000, 4,000 meters per second. With a Falcon Heavy, maybe 4,000, 5,000 meters per second leaving the upper stage to do 4,000 to 6,000 meters per second. So it's more of an equal relationship. And the upper stage is about 100 to 120 tons, that sort of idea, whereas the cores are about 400 tons. Here, the upper stage is half of that, 60 tons, while the core is still at 400 tons. So the again, most of the mass is here. So if you just add another core, it doesn't help, whereas Falcon Heavy gets more of a benefit from adding the cores, even though I still hate heavy configurations. Now, the clever of you will, I mean, and you know, here we are, we're trying to uh, get the payload to the moon here, and we find that maybe a 12 ton payload it could do, which is probably not that much better than just having the six boosters. But I know, I know what you're thinking. What if we put the six boosters as well, right? Of course you're thinking that. Let, let's do it. Let's go whole hog, right? Okay, I, I hope I've got them right enough. So these are Gem 63 XLs, and they're all firing at launch camp clamp release. Then we'll have those go off first. And I'll just release them all at the same time. And then the boosters. But we also have to have a way of throttling down these engines because otherwise the core tank is going to conclude at the same time as everything else. Maybe we should just uh, ignite the core. Well, no. <laughs> Our thrust weight ratio, even with these SRBs here, is still 1.37. So it's not spectacular at this point. Core. This is a realism overhaul thing. So I can throw all them down independently. Okay, given this, now what can we take to the moon and beyond reasonably well? Well, probably not more than 15 tons to the moon, but let's do the hard one. Let's try and take something to low Earth orbit. Hard one because, again, the launcher is not very well configured for low Earth orbit optimization, especially because of the low thrust weight ratio here. I'd, I'd really want to still dump half of the fuel in this stage just to save myself some pain. Um, maybe just doing that ahead of time would be better. It's tough to say, but I think we can manage this uh, 36 tons. Let's try that. Okay, somehow we have floating nose cones, but I don't believe that's going to cause any mathematical problems. I, I don't know what happened there. Uh, so let's just proceed. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. Oh, there's a 4.6 meter per second thing going on. Okay. All right. Well, we're on our way properly. Nothing to worry about. As you can see, not not a particularly feisty ascent. Now, if numbers change, if they give me different numbers for the BE-4s or the tank mass, I'll take those into consideration. But they'd have to change quite a lot to alter the thrust to weight ratio significantly. Oh god, I'm really turning really fast compared to the way I should be. Ah, here, engine group controller. But right now, I feel like we need all the thrust to weight ratio we can. Everything we can get. 
I'll try and throttle the core down. Again, if I set it to 50, that doesn't mean it's actually throttled down to 50%. It's 50% of its actual available range. Um, 1,700 kilonewtons compared to 2,600 for the outer ones. Okay, booster set. Off they go. I don't think they're recoverable, so it's fine. I could have uh, turned these a bit, but I decided to keep them in line like this. I thought that was more fun. Okay, getting ready for a booster set. G-Force is high, I probably should throw it down like the Delta IV Heavy does with all the engines at this point. Okay, booster set. And throttle up. And throttle up there too. Okay, I feel like we could probably ditch the fairings right now, actually. Um, yeah. I think I left too much time to apoapsis. Maybe. We'll see. The upper stage is still... I think it was 12 minutes. Um, it looks like it could carry more than this. We'll see how much we end up doing and then we'll work from there. Ah, the stage. This is underfueled right now. Overall, we can probably put some more fuel into it. Okay. Yeah, we made it to orbit with like 929 meters per second left and it's pretty high on the apoapsis as it is. So, uh, I'm going to adjust and we're going to see if we can pull up a heavier load to orbit with this configuration. The idea that... Oh, maybe... Did it, no, it didn't top it. Uh, did it top it off? Or add some fuel to it? I wonder. Because um, we are on the clamps and it didn't lock that stage. But anyway... Maybe... Let's just top it off. I don't think... Thrust weight ratio wise, it makes a whole lot of difference down there. Up here it sort of does, but we seem to have enough, so I don't want to sit through 19 minutes, but 48 tons. Can we do 48 tons with this? It's an interesting question. When we get to the upper stage, it's going to be 0.19 thrust weight ratio. I don't have good feelings about that at all. Um, you know what, let's just underfuel that. Um, I don't know if that'll work out, but... Let me lock it this time. Okay, so I'm gonna lock it and then unlock it and we'll see. So, but 48 tons, let's see if that works. The problem is the delta V number it's giving me isn't taking into account the way I'm throttling down the core and then throttling up again and using it as a part of another stage. Okay, here we go again. Throttle up. SAS is on. Ignition. And launch. And let me unlock that now. So, a little bit shallower trajectory, though we're carrying a heavier load now, so I don't want to overdo that. Okay, booster set. Okay, booster set. And throttle up. And more throttle up. You know, I'll wait until the upper stage starts before doing the fairings, I think. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. Right, so we still have a half-fueled upper stage here. Which, for anything but high orbits, you know, as long as it's going to be low-Earth orbit stuff, I'd probably stick to. Nah, we're going a little bit high now. Okay, separation... Uh-oh. 
Separation and ignition. And fairings. Okay, making orbit here. Still a little bit high on the apoapsis side, but it's fine overall. And shut down 437 by 220. So I'd say probably 48 tons is a good estimate for this configuration where we have three cores plus six boosters. Uh, serious stuff there. I don't know if they've built the cores to withstand that sort of thing. Well, the center core anyway, uh, to withstand that sort of thing. But, uh, well, could do it. Could do it. I... Uh, I think that does it as far as experimentation on this topic is concerned. I'm not going to launch it without the boosters. That's just too painful. The thrust to weight ratio is too small. I mean, with without the SRVs, um, with just the liquid boosters. I don't want to do that. Maybe, I mean, you know, you could slap on two and maybe it'll be all right. But, you know, you could get off the ground with three cores and no SRBs. It's just going to be really, really slow. <laughs> so 1.09 thrust to weight ratio, and you're going to lose quite a lot in terms of gravity losses like that, unless you underfuel the stages, but then why? But, uh, well, anyway, uh, you guys can reason it out from here, and I'll leave it at that. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.